This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. to the secret to everything. I am Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and I am so delighted that you have joined us on our program today. We have the infamous and famous Lori Wynn who is an author and we'll be talking about her book a little later on. Uh, Say hi Lori. Hi everyone. (laughs) Thanks. Happy holidays. Yes, and it's wonderful to be with you, and we're so excited, as always, about new energy for a new year, and as always, I'm going to throw a little bit of a wrench in our plans. We have a lot to talk to you about today. We really want to focus during the show on the subject of unlocking the new year, 2017, unlocking your wealth and abundance, and we will do that. But as you guys know by now, and as Lori knows, I have a lot of other things to talk about as well. So a couple of weird things can happen today, Lori. I want to see what you think about it. One of the things that happened is there's a woman, I'm not going to say her name, but she's an alternative health blogger, let's say, and she's actually found fame by announcing, which is kind of a morbid way to find fame, by announcing the the deaths of, uh, let's call it holistic practitioners. And like I said, I'm not going to mention her name. Some of you may know who I'm talking about. You can Google it a little bit and you'll probably be able to figure out who I'm talking about. But I'm getting a little disturbed, Lori, and here's why. Every death in America or around the world that happens to be an acupuncturist or a chiropractor or a nutritionist or a woo-woo person, kind of like you, Lori, wouldn't be like me, but like you, um, (laughs) is not, I don't believe, a conspiracy hit. But this woman has found fame on huge news channels and TV and radio by kind of compiling this list together of natural health practitioners that she believes have literally been murdered. I just kind of wanted to throw it out to you. I had a big debate on my Facebook page this morning about it. Kind of wanted to throw that out to you and see what you think. Do you believe that just because someone is an alternative practitioner of some kind, and that could include what, massage therapist even, uh, does that mean that if they die, and if they die from a violent crime, does that mean that that's a professional conspiracy hit? No, I know what you're talking about. I did see that in social media, and I was sort of taken back by it. I didn't read the whole article. But my feelings on just general um, holistic healers, they're human like anybody else. They have their own personal lives just like anyone else. And if they're not walking in the right direction, then there could be bad things that happen to a person. Um, But the way I see it is... You know, I don't think there's a conspiracy per se. I think it was the bad juju coming out in their lives at that given moment or time, and their time was up. Sometimes there is bad energy that surrounds a person that will abort them from their mission, and I think that 
plays a part of it as well. But as far as a conspiracy, like, you know, the Illuminati's or anything like that, I don't think that it's kind of, it's not in the same kind of vein. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I just, it just hit me kind of weird. I think you guys are going to continue to see, um, you know, possibly in mainstream media, this topic being talked about. And I just thought that was kind of interesting. But um, yeah, I yeah, found I, it very shocking, actually, when I saw it, because that was my first uh, taste of, of the reports. So well, I thought it was kind of shocking. And these are reaching the, you know, the mainstream news and um, being reported on and followed on by the mainstream news. And it and so, almost- Kim, it almost makes me think that she's part of the whole conspiracy, you know? I mean, to to be spreading that sort of thing puts her in a better light and more accepted. So it could be, you know, part of her mission to do that. Yeah, that's a really interesting thought. I actually want to lead into the celebrity deaths of 2016. And of course, we're quickly heading into 2017. And and what do you think about that? I actually happen to know quite a few people, as you know, and I uh, I know quite a few things that probably would be better off unknown. But I do find it interesting that uh, George Michael passed and as well, oh gosh, were you surprised with Carrie Fisher? I guess I was because she's very young and vibrant despite her, um, you know, mental health and openly admitted emotional health challenges. Very young and vibrant, very strong energy and very strong presence still at 60 and a little surprised. I don't know, you know, this audience might be familiar with the concept of frequency heart attacks, which actually to me is a lot more believable conspiracy than the total totality of all the natural health practitioner conspiracy, but kind of wanted your thoughts. I don't know if you heard, but it's being spread around that uh, George Michael also did a video called The Last Christmas a number of years ago. So that's interesting too. Huh. Well, we are getting close to our, our time, but I do, um, I was shocked that, well, I wasn't shocked about Carrie Fisher because I thought that they kept her on life support for a while before they announced her death. Um, but George Michael, I was totally shocked because, you know, I thought he was in good health, good spirits and, and ready to, to rock the world again. So, um, but I know that you are going, getting close to your break time. So I want to make sure that we honor that. Yeah, we'll be back with a lot more interesting things to talk about right here on The Secret to Everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Mnemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Mnemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Welcome back to The Secret to Everything. I am here with Lori Wynn, and I am Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and we are going to talk for just a few minutes about the concept of kind of a resolution type of energy or the energy of, I, I prefer the word intentions. And I've got some uh, intentions up my sleeve that are kind of interesting that I'd like to share with you guys for the new year. But Lori, I think you have kind of a different possible view on like resolutions, intentions. Would you like to share that with us? I absolutely. Um, a long time ago, I figured that in, um, resolutions didn't work for me because I ended up making a promise and not keeping it every time. And I'd feel like a failure. And then um, the whole intention thing, I'm, you know, involved with rhythm and the cadence and seasons, and I do a lot of um, moon cycles. So my intentions are usually planted on a new moon, um, which is today, as a matter of fact. And um, I release those intentions. I plant them and then I release them, you know, during the full moon. And um, so my take on New Year's is more of a declaration. And I've been doing this. I've been declaring certain years. <laughs> and one year I declared it as the year of radical change. And I ended up moving to Atlanta six months later for a, a job change. And then I, I wrote this in my book. Um, this is the year of prosperous circumstances, and I ended up meeting my husband. So I feel like declarations are more my thing, where I can declare a year. Um, so I have a declaration for this year. Do you want me to share that now? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I declared this year as uh, manifesting expansion in freedom, finances, and family. And what that means to me is the freedom to choose not just good things, but the best things for me in 2017. Um, expansion in finances by creating successful workshops and retreats, and then family healing and restorations for the broken relationships in my family. So it was a three-prong kind of declaration, and I like to see those things happen during the year, and I kind of keep track of them. So that helps me more than just a resolution, because the resolution made it feel like failure to me. So what that's, are your thoughts? On this? <laughs> yeah, that's a different way of looking at it. I like it because to me, it has the energy of uh, a quick release. So you kind of release that and let the energy, uh, you know, kind of carry that, you know, backed by the planetary energy as well and kind of let it do its thing. So I really, really like that. While we're talking about planetary energy, um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about 2017 energy. And the reason I'm talking to you about 2017 energy is because if you're not sensitive to the rhythms and flow of life, you may not realize that we are about to step into an energy that is completely different. And I like the word cadence, so I'm going to borrow it in cadence from 2016. 2016 was a super, super fast-paced energy. 2017, the way it's feeling to me as I step into that timeline, there's going to be more space for breath and there's going to be more space for change and for growth, which I actually like because I don't know. I barely kept up with 2016. I don't know about you. Lori. Yeah, same with me. It, it flew by. It flew. 
It really did. And, you know, and of course, that's, you know, understanding that some of you do that the time is being messed with and other, a lot of other things are going on. But I, I did a thing on the collective consciousness of this radio audience, since there is no restriction in access to energy and all time is now and we can access past, present and future at any time. I went ahead with my technology and had my engineers uh actually put a new piece into my technology that is able to measure your guys, and that's each and every one of you, in a collective average sense, preparation for are you prepared and are you resonating and in tune with the energy of 2017? And no offense, you guys, but Lori, I was actually a little shocked. Are we completely in resonance? No, but we're actually as a group mostly in resonance, which is super exciting to me because that means that you guys are going to be able to take advantage of this energy as you move forward into uh, your intentions and your goals. And if you want to do it Lori's way as well, you can do that for 2017. So I was rather surprised. I have a feeling though, Lori, it's because of the breath that's built into this year versus a lot of people don't vibrate at that super high frequency and say so wouldn't be able to keep up with a super, super fast paced energy. So I just think it's better as a planet. Um, and I think it's a really great year to see what you guys really want to actualize come into fruition. I will say, as I was running some scans over the past couple of weeks, there's some things that popped up in my own life and in the lives of really the planet and a lot of my clients, I want to draw your attention to as possible focuses for healing in 2017. It may not surprise many of you, but so much of the planet, Lori, still needs what? What would you guess? I'll ask you, what would you guess would be one thing uh, that the planet as a whole or people as a whole would still kind of have unresolved in their energy fields? I'll give you a clue. It's not physical. Oh, um, emotional healing, I would think. Bam! You're good, girl. That's it. <laughs> That's it. We are notorious as humans for bearing and repressing our emotions, whether it's an emotion from a fight last night with your husband or your wife or your mom or your dad or your kid, or whether it's something that happened 40 years ago. These are unresolved emotions. And one interesting, interesting thing uh, that I'm actually going to be teaching about this week in Practitioner Lori is when we repress these emotions that have a what? Electrobiochemical charge meaning they're not just energetic things, they're physical things. Right. So we layer these into our bodies, into our fields. The energy has to go somewhere. What happens when that's repressed and stuck in all these weird places in us? It causes a word we're very familiar with in this century, which is inflammation. Yeah. And so we have all these autoimmune diseases and we're all inflamed. And you can look at people, you know, including me and you at times, Lori, and we can be like, oh my gosh, you know, they're in an active state of inflammation. A lot of what we see as fat is actually water retention and puffiness and the physical body reacting to that. So I just encourage you guys as you decide how to spend your money and what books to read and you know what to spend your free time on that you choose things that help you have that what emotional freedom and emotional release. You know, for Lori, it may be drumming. For me, you know, it's working with technology and energy work, at, you know, on Lori as well. But for you guys, it might be yoga or it might be connecting with nature. It might be writing and journaling. But please stop repressing your emotions. It's absolutely destroying us. So that's kind of my negative uh, spin, negative positive spin. On. I, have, I have something to add to that because I wasn't really shocked about um, the energy of the collective wanting change because that's pretty evident in the physical world right now so i know that they're wanting change and they're wanting to improve their lives but as far as the emotional healing people hold on to things they hold on to things so much and i you know as far as emotional goes it's bad to like you said it's bad to hold on to repressed anything and you bury it deeper and deeper and and it causes the physical problems so it's this year let it go i'm just saying just let it go what is it doing for you now nothing it's getting you sick and diseased so just let it go however that helps and 
what what really started helping me letting go of some emotional issues was just writing it down when I felt it, writing in a journal. And then I'd look back and two days later, it'd be like, why was I hanging on to this? It was crazy. <laughs> so, you know, if you write, that's a wonderful way to get it out because it gets out of your body and onto the paper and then you can read it later and say, oh, man, this was nothing compared to what I'm going through now or whatever. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Thank you. I appreciate those comments. And another thing I'd really encourage you guys, since we're still on this theme before we get into the wealth and abundance topics, which we can really go deep into. But another thing I just have to tell you guys that comes up on thousands of scans that I would love for you guys to let go or consider letting go or do some further research, watch some YouTube videos. Um is, and we could even get an expert on here to talk about this, but I would encourage you to pick a couple things in your diet to let go of. And I'm not talking about cake and candy and sugar. Like you guys know that. I'm not even going to talk about gluten. The actually number one thing that comes up as an, you know, inflammation allergy in like almost a hundred percent, I would say 98% is, can you guess what, Lori? Besides gluten, um, Sugar. Um, sugar's big. It's actually, which this does have sugar in it, milk. Oh. Yeah, wow. Milk, milk, not cheese. So if you guys are like, um, I don't want to go on a radical diet. I don't want to give up bread. I don't want to go on this. You know, we don't even know what diets to go on anymore. I would encourage you, give up milk and see how you feel. And and there's a million trillion reasons for that. And we can go into it in another show, but that's what's coming up, you know, on the scans and on the technology over and over. A couple other things you might want to consider um, investigating. Again, this is in our foods. This is in our environment. It's in the chemtrails. And you know what I'm going to say, Lori, heavy metals, huge, huge, huge coming up on about 97 to 98% of everyone we test. And again, there's such easy solutions for this. Um, and it's not, I have to laugh because I, I went off on another rant on Facebook about this, but one of the powers, current promoted powers that be that's being promoted by a huge, huge publishing uh, company, he says, just eat more cilantro and you'll get rid of heavy metals. Can you imagine how many pounds of cilantro you would have to eat, Laura, honestly? <laughs> honestly now come on these people are probably thinking they can have it on their mexican food once a month and i am telling you guys that you probably have to eat like a ton of cilantro to even have it begin to help your body especially with everything else going on we know the only thing toxic in our bodies is not heavy metals but anyway all that to say and Lori knows what i'm going to say but i have found the best thing to easily get rid of heavy metals and i just had one the other night is a negative ion foot bath and there's another big controversy about that but you guys have to start to see a pattern here where there's a lot of people screaming, that's a fraud, that doesn't work, that's a fake. You should be like, where can I get one? Right, Lori? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tried it. I, that was my Christmas present. I asked my husband to get me an ion foot bath. And I used the tech after, before, during, and after my foot bath. And you can't tell me it doesn't pull out energy and it doesn't help your energy grow to a, a higher frequency because I saw the proof on the, on the application that, we use. Yeah, so you, can't, you can't tell me it's a fraud. I've seen it in action. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great point. And, and Lori's referring to our, of course, beautiful Energy Mastered app that we've waited so long for, worked so hard on, and still working on that actually takes a picture of your aura, your chakras, and uh, gives you some information on how to balance that. So that's what Lori's referring to. I think she did a before. Did you do a before, during, and after pick, I think, Lori? Yes, I did. I did a, a picture before I took the foot bath. I did one during the foot bath while I was in it because it's a 30-minute process. And then I took one after. And there is a definite move of negative ions, energy, detoxing, whatever you want to call it. It was actually happening in real time, and I snapped a photo of it, and, and I broadcasted it. So it does work. I don't know where people get their information, but for me, it does work and, you know, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and what's so kind of gross and cool at the same time is I actually saw like heavy metals uh, 
in my water. I don't always, but in this case, I saw the presence of heavy metals, which is just so frightening considering how much work I do on myself. So another thing to really strongly consider when you guys are thinking of, you know, adding something, which would be adding maybe something like the foot bath. And I have no stock in this. I don't recommend necessarily a certain brand. Uh, you can find the good ones for around a hundred dollars. You can do them at a spa. You can try That's them out true. at a spa. You know, just ask for a place that has them. But we have so much fun when we talk, Kim. It's almost that time again. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll be right back talking, I promise, about wealth, abundance, money flow coming in your life in 2000. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com.
Thanks for listening to The Secret to Everything. We are back with the beautiful and amazing Lori Wynn, and I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. And finally, we've been teasing you for a while. We're going to dig into, gosh, what what a big subject, the wealth and abundance. Hey, not just in, my whole life, so I'm ready. <laughs> not just in general, but in 2017, we really want to bring this home for you guys in a way that will hopefully make make some difference. So I want to talk about something that the girls and I talk about a lot and get your take on this. And the first thing I want you guys, again, is something to kind of release into this year that controls so much more than what we think about wealth and abundance. And that is, there's this myth that other people care, Lori, what house we live in, or if we have brick on our house, or stucco on our house, or if we have a certain kind of flower in our yard, or a certain kind of car in our driveway, or we're carrying a certain kind of purse. Yeah. I've really come to the conclusion, and it's so freeing, and, and I want you guys to hear me, no one cares. The only people that care are possibly you and you care and you should be making choices that you desire that are high frequency for you and that bring you pleasure or possibly in some cases your family might not want to drive around in a beat up you know what 19 you know 67 man they might appreciate driving around in a nice car so possibly your family and friends might care but as far as the general world who in Africa Lori even knows my name or cares whether I live in a good neighborhood or a bad neighborhood or I, or I carry a name brand perk. So what's your take on all of that? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I lived in a city where names were like the thing. <laughs> you know, if you didn't carry a designer bag, you were nobody. And I'm not going to say what city that is, but it was like the only things they ever did was shop and eat. And I caught, I got caught up in that. In the television business, I was just all into that. So people could see that I was this big name producer. I had to have the designer thing. Then, you know, times weren't so good. And I didn't really have a nest egg to save. And I ended up getting low on the totem pole selling those designer things just to make money. So now I live a balanced life. I think it's all about balance and and like you said, what makes you have pleasure and, and going with that, but living simpler. You know, I, I live a simple life, but I live in paradise and I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. So I think there's a whole thing about that materialism that's all throughout this world, basically, and, and status and how people perceive you instead of who you really are. And a lot of people equate their are. And that's a big misconception, in my opinion. Absolutely. And it's interesting because I, at one time, thought this used to be my goal, and this is so crazy, but I'm like, I would drive by these, you know, car dealers, and I would think, you know, what do people do that they can go in and they can plop down whatever amount, you know, of cash and buy a car? That became my ultimate goal. I'm like, someday, you know, I'm going to have a successful enough business to be able to go buy a car with cash. And we're not talking any like a thousand dollar used car. We're talking brand new, whatever I want car. Well, once upon a time, let's say four or five years ago, I, I was at that point in my career and I went in and I plopped down my cash and I cried in this beautiful car. And I'm like, okay, I've made it. I swear, as soon as I had that moment of like, you know, making it, I enjoyed driving this car. It was a sports car. It was, you know, again, brand new. I liked it. It's fast. Uh, fast cars can get in trouble, by the way. But very quickly, the, I don't know what you would call it, if you would call it satisfaction, it fell off. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I did that. What next? So then it became, right. then it became moving to the ideal location. I'm not saying location is not important. We all know it is and energy and ley lines and on and on vortexes. And so I moved to this beautiful house. Some people might consider it a luxury house in the mountains on actually on the side of a mountain on eight acres. And I'm like, now I've made it. Now I'm going to be happy. You know, I bought my car with cash. I actually had two very expensive cars. I had this beautiful home. My children had cars. And you know what? It was so weird, Lori. It was like I was sitting there and I was still empty. I'm like, yeah. 
not only was I empty, but I became because of working so, so, so hard because what we need to realize is money is what energy, right? right? And that stuff had not just a monetary cost, it had a energetic cost. And, and I ended I wanna, up getting sick. I want to stop you there because okay. there's one thing that I have to tell you that I say all the time, what you gain, you must maintain. And that really goes with everything that you said as far as the energy behind it. You can get all these accomplishments and do it, but you have to maintain it and keep up that pace to have it. It's just, it's crazy. It makes people spin on the rat, the, the wheel you know, to get those things and the American dream and all that. It's like such a programmed behavior that we do. So I, yeah, I love that. And that's actually a point I'll make a a little, I'll bring out a little bit uh, in a minute, but I want to tell you guys, I know a lot of you that are maybe sitting and you can't pay your electric bill or your refrigerator looks a little empty or you can't go to, I mean, I've been there. I've been there where I couldn't go to the movies or take my kids to the movies. And maybe you have too, Lori, because you didn't yeah. have that extra money. And maybe you'd even have a charge card that you could put it on. And I've been there. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. It is nice not to have to worry about money or not to have to worry about bills. But my daughter told me this, and I never believed it till I actually went through this whole cycle, I believe, Lori, that there is no more emotional or mental satisfaction over the amount of making $70,000 a year. Isn't that interesting? I think yeah. that's so yeah. interesting. It's, it's, in other words, what's 70000 Like, that's just about enough to live in a decent house, in a decent neighborhood, drive a decent car, be able to pay your bills and have a savings, Right. Yep. It would be for me. (laughs) Definitely. But there's, but what do we do? We lay ourselves on the altar of work, you know, and, and the, you know, it used to be my goal again to be, you know, multimillionaire, but I've had tons of money and I'm telling you guys, and like I was trying to share, you know, I got really, really sick and I didn't lose anything because I had tons of money. So I didn't lose anything. I wasn't in danger of losing anything. But I couldn't enjoy it. I would have traded every single possession forever, you guys, to be well. And you have that six to nine months back that I had to fight my way back to health. Every single possession forever. Money does not buy happiness. So when we talk about wealth and abundance in the new year, I want you guys to really feel that, that we're talking about mental, emotional, physical, and material, I love what you said, Lori, balanced happiness. And I don't know, I'm sure you've heard this kind of trend going on. It's called minimalism. And I kind of love minimalism and I kind of hate minimalism. So in my new book, Unlocked, I'm actually creating this new thing, which reflects my energy, which is called minimal luxury. I want to start a new movement, Lori. (laughs) Because I don't think you have to. I saw this one guy and he has his apartment and it's an average size apartment. I think he's single. And he has these big rooms. Well, they're not huge rooms, you know, average size rooms and they're empty. You know, he has his table. He has his chairs. He has one lamp. He has, you know, two dishes, you know, and I'm not critiquing it, but I'm saying if that was my place, if that was my apartment, I would have a nice table, nice chair, <laughs> nice stitches and colors that I like. So I think there's a balance between this minimal deprivation. You know, you can only wear one shirt at a time. So you have two shirts, right? One in the That's wash and one you wear. <laughs> and, and, and the whole closets. I know, I know somebody actually that sent me a bunch of clothes that he was buying. I seriously almost fell off my chair. The bill for his clothes, and it was only a couple suits and shirts and ties, you know, outfits, let's say, uh, was like $9,000. I no longer where I'm at in my life can justify spending $9,000 on a couple outfits. You know how what I automatically think? Well, you guys know me. I'm a big animal lover. I'm like, how many treats can I buy for my dog with $9,000? <laughs> no, seriously, you guys. Where would you wear them? That's what I would be thinking. <laughs> where well, would I wear true. something like well, that? That's definitely true for me. But, but how many orphans can have a mattress on their bed instead of sleeping on a wood board is what I think. How yeah. much can that do for the 
widow with a child that I sponsor and her family to get them ahead and give them a leg up, whether in education or a better house. You guys know what I'm saying. How many meals could it buy for someone, you know? Even in your own town, right? We don't have to go out of the country or out of our state to find people with needs. And I know people are going to like write me and be like, oh gosh, you're this, you're that. But that's where I'm going with the minimal luxury. At what point, at what point do we say, especially if we're conscious people, especially if we're healers or psychics or naturopaths, we say, and you hear my words, we say that we're living from a certain frequency, right, Lori, or a certain integrity or a certain energy. But what are we doing? Are we plugging back down into 3D, into what the world has programmed us from birth to be, which is what? A consumer of goods. My dad and I drove to the landfill a couple months ago. Gosh, you guys, it made me want to throw up. I am not, there were new computers in there. There were nice couches in there. I'm, I'm like, um, could you guys turn around so I can climb down in the dumpster and get some stuff out from my house? Like, <laughs> where does stuff end up? You guys, it burns. Talk to the people in the fires in Tennessee and Kentucky. Talk about their multi-million dollar homes and their stuff and their expensive clothes and their jewelry and even their precious stuff, right? Like pictures. I think that hit me long ago during Hurricane Hugo. I was there for a story and I saw all these beautiful homes with all their tapestries and everything that they, their possessions, all full of sludge and mud. And it was heartbreaking to see that, but it's like, it's just things, you know, things don't make you happy as you found out, you know, it's just things. There's some things that you need. And some things that you don't. And we have grown up in a world of materialism. But how do we get people to think differently? How how does that work with Unlocked? Yeah, I love that. I think it really, you know, I have this thing that I teach. and, And it's actually a metaphysical universal principle. And you have to step out of 3D and go to what? 4D to cle- or above to clearly see the third dimension, the dimension of f- the physical, clearly. The problem is we do not raise our frequency high enough. We do not get enough purification, enough clarity, enough detoxing to get to any other level to open up our sixth sense, to open up our crown chakras, to raise our frequency, to expand our energy field. We don't see 3D clearly. So I see it as an energetic and a spiritual solution, really, Lori, that we have to raise our consciousness purify our being and all of a sudden the essence of who we are comes out of the 3d and once that happens you don't really have to do a lot of gimmicks or you know take magical classes once that happens you begin to see the programming in 3d extremely clearly and the manipulation of the advertisers and the peer pressure that's created even in nice neighborhoods you know all the stuff that goes on I just think it becomes very clear once you're at a higher kind of level of consciousness that's amazing because I I agree I agree totally so when we back to break we're going to go deeper into some really, really practical things I can, if you haven't thought about, that might be great to instill in 2017 and some of the energetics as well, right here on The Secret to Everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and Ms. Lori Wynn. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. President of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.HolisticCancerFoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secret to everything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secret to everything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genix provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Back to the secret to everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and Lori Wynn. And we have been talking about kind of all kinds of things about the energy of 2017, about unlocking your wealth and abundance, about some things that you can release and get rid of, some things that you can release and create. And I'm going to get really super practical. So I'm going to ask you a question. Lori, do you have a savings account or do you have something put back for a rainy day? Yes. I do, but I didn't always. Ooh, interesting. I didn't always. <laughs> I, um, I always spent what I got until I got married, and that wasn't going to work in a marriage. <laughs> so um, I have been, 
kind of taught. I wasn't taught that when I was in, you know, younger with my parents. I just saw what they did and they spent every time they had anything extra, they wouldn't put it away. They'd buy something nice for themselves. And I know that's a root cause of, of not having abundance in my life because of those habits. So I can tell you now that that's a practice that I do on a regular basis and I do have money saved away. Um, but that wasn't always the case. That's so interesting because I was the opposite. I was taught to save and I'm always like, no, live in the moment, seize the day, go party, kind of like what you're saying, you know, buy the nicer car, you know, go on the vacation, you know, get that cute outfit. But it's so funny because, um, it's interesting if we break down because everything in this world is what colors, symbols, especially symbols, words, you know, letters, everything can be figured out and unlocked in this reality by looking at and paying attention to those things. So it's interesting that the word savings actually has the word save in it. It has the ability to what? It has the ability to save you from stress. It has the ability to save you from a crisis or most crises, especially obviously financial ones. It has the ability to save someone else's uh, health or someone else's house, right, Lori? Because you can lend it to your friends and family if you have a big enough savings or help your child put a you know down payment on a house. So savings is really a bigger energy than obviously, like you said, most of us are taught in American or you know any kind of culture. But what's so interesting about um, having a savings account, and again, I want to get really practical, is you pegged it, Lori, in America and in Canada particularly. Um, We are living what? We're living income to income, paycheck to paycheck. But what's super sad, and I don't know if you guys think about this, there's a lot of two-income families, sometimes even three-income families with maybe a younger parent living there or a a child contributing to the income. Sometimes multiple people, I've noticed in these big houses, sometimes there's more than just a one family living there. So sometimes there's these multiple two, three, four, five paycheck families. And what's so interesting is they're not just living paycheck to paycheck like one income. Some of these two income families, like in my neighborhood, they're living two incomes to two incomes. That's terrifying. It really yeah, only takes one I income. That survival. That's that, yeah. that to me is like a survival energy or a lack energy that they're just always trying to keep it up. And that and it goes with that what you gain you must maintain kind of feeling to me. You know, when you get to that point of debt so far that you have to keep working to get rid of it and you don't, that's like the hamster going on the wheel over and over again. Yeah, it absolutely really is. It really robs you of freedom when you are so dependent on living on two incomes, paycheck to paycheck. And maybe you guys have made it and you've moved into a, you know, you guys all know in your town, the coveted communities, the, what do we, what word do we use? I think we use the word, what, prestigious communities, the one with the pool and the swim club and the big, huge brick houses on the hill. You know the one, Lori. And oh, yeah. what is the cost? What is the cost? Not only is it living paycheck to paycheck, possibly. You may have some left over. You guys may have great, both have great jobs, but there's a huge cost. And again, I don't think we think about it, especially if it's your first time, let's say moving up, which we're encouraged to do in American culture. So you move up into like, even if it's a moderate neighborhood and let's say you're coming from an apartment as a young married couple, maybe you've been here or even, you know, single and you come into a house from an apartment. What is the first thing I think that hit me, Laurie? What hits you when you move from like an apartment into a house? What's kind of the difference? You have so much more room. (laughs) It's like you have more space to do what you want to do, I think. That's that's what it did for me. I was like, oh, I have all this space now. But then you have to take care of it. You have to clean Uh it. (laughs) You have to do all the things that make it maintain it again. <laughs> it's that thing. Yeah, absolutely. So it's lovely. I mean, you've got all this space, which has been proven by the minimalists again, that we don't even use all that space. When they do body heat maps and they do them over like a year and six months and three months in different periods of time, they find that really you only use anywhere from like 30 to like 70 percent of any space you have whether it's a thousand square foot house you know there's rooms that you use more often right or that you gravitate to and rooms that you don't use depending on the design and structure of your house but what is so funny to me and i've experienced this and it's traumatic to me the expense 
of especially if you well number one not all men like to do yard work I think that's a fallacy <laughs> an assumption <laughs> but, um, I know a lot of men that yeah. actually don't want to spend their free time doing yard work but you know if you're single like I am oh my gosh Lori the expense of hiring someone if you live in a lush climate like well, I don't know about you guys if you have a lot of grass in Florida, but North Carolina, there's a lot of grass and it's usually pretty lush and balanced. We have to mow lawns every single week. And if you have a big lawn, you guys don't want to see that lawn bill and you don't want to see the bush trimming bill. And it adds up, right, Lori? Or the well, snow shovel like bill. And, and you know? electricity and heat and water, all of those things go up a notch when you get your own house and your own place. Yeah, and, so and, and repairs. Right. So maybe you don't like working the extra 10 hours a week to pay. I, you know, and I have to tell you, I was really dumb. I got the electric bill where like they average your uh, electricity and they greatly underestimated how cool I like to be in the summer because I hate being hot. Well, I hate being cold too. You know, we're so spoiled. But I ended up getting a thousand dollar big bam electric bill a couple months ago, which was, you know, all my extra that they didn't average. So what I'm telling you guys is I was horrified. I'm like, I don't like working this hard to pay the electric company a thousand dollars. Like, can you guys think of what you'd rather spend money on than the electric company? Like, yeah, lots to think about. So we're just getting started really. And, and we always run out of time. I, I told Rob, this needs to be like an eight hour show, but Lori, let's move out of Unlocked a little bit. We'll have to continue this conversation later. We will put up, we had a program a while ago on it. We will re-put that up for you guys on the website. But why don't you tell us really briefly about your book and where they can get a hold of you and find your book? Sure, sure. Um, my book is called Love Beats. And um, I am creating, I, I do create workshops. Um, I have the energy, love is energy is my motto. And it's, about emotions and emotions are energy in motion which is why I call love is energy and it's about the energy that you give and receive in relationships and I have a workshop that I'm putting together called tuning in to the deeper uh, part heartbeat of your life and so I have retreats and workshops and you can find out about them on lovebeatsenergy.com and it's love beats like more than one with an s and i do um therapeutic drumming some guided visualizations and spiritual teachings about the energy that you give and receive in love relationships yeah and if you guys are single it's a great book to get a hold of there's a lot of i think there's a lot of hope and a lot of lessons and a lot of learning that you went through that you've really you know shared with it us in the general audience on, you know, kind of your path to love, possible ways to find love and not to give up hope that, you know, love can right. happen at any age, right? <laughs> I, I got married at the ripe age of 56 and I've been happily married and live in paradise. And uh, I had to go through those five relationships in order to find forever love. And so I, I encourage those that are single to, to give it a look. It's very, very real. <laughs> It's very conversational and you'll get a lot out of it. Yeah, absolutely. It, there's just a lot there. So, and when Laura keeps saying she lives in paradise, um, I don't want to really say where she lives, but she lives, uh, let's say around Florida somewhere. I and it really Florida, is. Let's say there, that. There you go. Okay. It really on. is. <laughs> She's not lying. She keeps saying that. Like, I think uh, mine's pretty good. I wouldn't quite say Winston-Salem, North Carolina's paradise. It's pretty close. It's kind of paradise for me. I'm a nature girl, and we live in the foothills of the mountains. So I think mine's pretty paradise but hers is the stereotypical view of paradise so she's not just saying that she really does live in paradise but <laughs> we have we've got some other great opportunities Lori's been in and out of some of these we've got uh, ultimate awakening which is our premier membership group when we talk about raising your consciousness if you don't know what that means we share with you how that means we're a group of people that all have that same interest of raising our frequency and coming together and um, being more than one of us can be alone and encouraging each other and sharing teachings like these and observations and you know, ways to, to do things differently. So we have that available on the website. I am super. Way, Kim, that's a good way for them to kick off their new year too, you know, by, by joining one of the programs because that raises your frequency tremendously and gives you more awareness. 
even the fact of a, of considering, you know, becoming more conscious, it's really cool. You start becoming more conscious by thinking about being more conscious. So it doesn't take much for the universe to align with your goals and your desires and your intentions. And I'm very easy to find. I'm on the secret to everything.com. We have a little blog going there. We have lots of classes and lots of great stuff to dig into. I specialize and have for the last 15 years in frequency and frequency technology and how that can be applied to all areas of your life, including wealth and abundance. And I just wanted to share with you guys during this whole show, I have been playing the current new pre preview of what 2017 will be like according to my engineers so we've been playing the 2017 frequency underneath this whole show and you may not be able to hear it but that's kind of different wavelengths in the way frequencies go so as always we love you guys we so appreciate you listening uh did you share your website Lori? yes lovebeatsenergy.com and secret to everything.com. We wish you the best, most expansive, high frequency, high consciousness new year that you can have. And we love you and thank you for listening. <laughs>